Welcome back to another wonderful ESL podcast, man. We're topping this month off with some fire. That's right, man. I got a coaching session from both uh, Jackie and I. She's the one that got a 28 in TOEFL IBT speaking. Well, I cut up the audio. It's a little jacked up because obviously I don't have a graphic designer and whatnot. That will, and hopefully they end up coming on board later on this year so they can make my videos very beautiful. But nonetheless, I'm going and planning on obviously putting... Um, you know, a lot of different content together. And this is one of those where you guys actually hear me walk one of my students through one of those coaching sessions. And I'm really excited about this because a lot of you probably have a tendency of having the same issues in regards to your speaking questions one, two, and three, which we're going to be covering today. And so listen to the craziness of both her and I, and let's listen to greatness because she's the one that got a 28 and there are going to be a number of other audios that are going to be coming up with uh, students from, obviously, Palestine, Egypt, uh, Ni uh, Nicaragua. Big shout out to my Nicaraguayans and uh, so many other people. So, in saying that, guys, stay tuned. And without further ado, let's dive into this bad boy. Oh, I got to get your best friend, the Google Timer, too. So, let me hurry up and throw that over here. And then this is your question. I'm going to hurry up and de-highlight this one. There you go. So you have been very busy and unable to prepare for the exam tomorrow. Do you stay up late to study or do you sleep less? Or, I'm sorry, and sleep less or just study less and get a full night of sleep? Okay. I prefer to study and stay up late even though I'm getting less sleep because first I could have a higher chance to get a better test score or higher grade. If I study well and until the next day, then I could probably have an academic success as my result. Secondly, I can catch up the next day if I didn't really get enough sleep because of my preparation for the exam. As opposed to studying less and getting full night's sleep, that means that I will probably fail that exam. So I'd rather stay up late and study. Hey, I was wondering you were gonna put a personal exam, a personal example in there. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot about a personal example. Uh, stay up okay. late. You said even though very good subordinating clause, greater chance getting a high test score or a grade, academic success, and then you transition, not enough sleep as opposed to you did a nice comparison and contrast, but I was waiting for that personal example just so that <laughs> you would have been able to stretch it out to the end. Yeah. Uh, but how, but what if I end up saying that without an example, what would my grade be like? Oh, man. Well, finishing at around 40 to 41 seconds. Yeah. It would be, you know, it's really hard to say because I don't know exactly if they're going to like dock you points just because you're not able to fulfill like the 45, uh, 44, 45 seconds. Uh -huh. But all in all, in saying that, and without the grade, you know, dismissal and everything, that's pr that's a very, very solid speaking question one. That was the best one you've done so far. Really, without an example, I totally forgot to give one. Yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not necessarily. You don't necessarily need to give an example, right? Mm -hmm. You just you could have added an example to stretch out the time. Yeah. Right. And so again, examples are always good, but sometimes you might have time. Sometimes you won't have time. Now, again, you said greater chance tests, you know, academic success opposed to this, you know, putting in an example would have definitely, you know, bump it up just a little bit more, but at the same time, you only had a small amount of time left. So. Yeah. Oof. Okay. All right. But that is not bad. Not bad at all. You should pat yourself on the back because we're actually getting somewhere, especially with that one, okay? All right, all right. Ah, example, example, okay. Uh, it's all about those examples. Okay, all right, here we go. Let me blow this bad boy up. Da, da, da. <laughs> this one's a harder one. Do you think should some college students be required to take at least one class in philosophy? All right. Ready when you are. I don't think that students should be required to take at least one class in philosophy. It is because it's just a waste of time. 
For example, if I take a philosophy class in order for me to graduate, I, it, it is not related to what I am going to finish. It's not related to finish my degree. And sometimes classes cost a lot of money. So it would also it will increase your debt if you're just um, loaning money for your education. So I don't think that it is practical for students to have a philosophy class as compulsory. Secondly, I don't have a, <laughs> I don't oh, have. Secondly, no. you saw, you had a lot of details in that one, right? Yeah, I was yeah. expecting it. I was expanding it because I don't have a second reason. <laughs> Right, and that's the difficulty, especially with these different types of questions, because if you have, uh, let me hurry up and stop that. If you have so many details, or uh -huh. if it's so difficult where you're like, man, I just don't know if I could put in another one. Like it's, it's like on a lot of those details you gave, it's like one, two, three, four, five, we can expand on one. So for example, if a college student takes, you know, a philosophy class for one semester at a very expensive college, it would cost this amount more compared, you know what I mean? Like there could be a number of different things as opposed to taking this class, which could be beneficial for him going forward with his major. Um, you know, like like making a little bit of a story out of it instead of giving like a list of example, 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 example. That was a tough one. That's why I wanted to give it to you. Yeah, that's a tough one. It is definitely a tough one. Right, uh. right. And the thing is, you would have to just do a lot of comparison and contrast. like. Well, depending yeah. on the student's major, okay, taking one class of philosophy could take away from, uh, you know, the, his core requisite classes. For example, if you take, you know, uh, if you get a bachelor in science, wink, wink, right? If you get a bachelor yeah. in science, um, you know, and you have the opportunity to take biology for one semester as opposed to philosophy, but you are, you know, you're, it, it, philosophy is a compulsory objective then that's going to take away from you quickly finishing up your core requisite classes by do you see what i mean just making a whole bunch of blah 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 out of it you see yeah so, but it all defeat it all backs the purpose of should they be required to do that fuck no there are plenty of other electives there are pl plenty of other classes that they could take you know yeah ah oh, plenty of okay plenty of other electives that could be related to their degree Right. It could be worth of yeah. Ah right. can you can you can you um give me a sample answer to that question? Sure. Okay, so here we go. One, I do not believe that students should be required to take a philosophy class throughout university for a couple of reasons. I think the first reason would be because they actually could put their efforts toward their towards their core requisite classes as opposed to elective classes. So philosophy more than likely would fall in alignment with elective classes, such as maybe a little psychology or sociology. But if someone is majoring in a bachelor of science, they would probably would want to take a biology class instead of being forced to take a philosophy class. That way that, that could hurry up and finish the core requisite classes. Oh, oh my God, that was a crazy comparison and contrast, but it was like a story, yeah. right? Yeah. See, when we're forced to take something that we really don't need and we're taken away from this, it becomes uh -huh. an annoyance and that's exactly what happened. So I told it from my perspective, but I switched it up. So could you tell it from your perspective? Fine. That is super long, don't cry. Here we go. So if it says, if you are to choose between two apartments, to live in next semester. One apartment is near the ca campus, but expensive. The other one is far, but cheaper. Mm -hmm. Make sure you have that contrast between far, cheaper, this, that, and everything, okay? Okay. And whichever one you choose, you could give an example to why it being far is better and why it being cheaper is better. So you don't have to come up with two ideas. You have two ideas right there. Okay. But slightly expensive. The other is a little far from campus, but cheaper. Okay. 
Okay. Now remember, if you look at the good, you know, okay, like further, you know, if it's further from campus, you would probably be able to enjoy, you, you, there wouldn't be that much noise or enjoy more green, stuff like that, yeah. An apartment in Florida campus, but slightly expensive. Okay. Okay, let me know when you're ready. Okay, I'm ready. All right, let's do it. If I'm given, if I'm given a chance to choose between two apartments, I would choose the latter. It is because I could save so much money and use that money to buy necessary things that I need for school. For example, if my apartment is cheaper, then I could I could use the spare money to buy textbooks or study materials. Secondly, if it is a little bit far from campus, I could get some exercise going because if you spend so much time in school, you'll be just sitting there without getting like really exercise at all because you're just you're listening to the professor all day long and that is why I chose that <laughs> I didn't give a, a, a <laughs> I was like what are you talking about you gotta sit all day that didn't really relate to the apartment you know it being near the campus right yeah <laughs> so it being further away you could take a bicycle to to your class as opposed to just walking maybe a, a, a hundred oh, yeah. feet. And uh, this would enable you to live a more healthier, you see what I mean? That's it. That's all you needed for your second example. Just a little bit of something that I want you to, I want you to go into the event as if, holy shit. I'm sure you've been at a university where it's very big, right? If you put yourself in that event, I remember at UNLV, in ASU, you would have to walk for fucking ever and a day to get from mm -hmm. one class to another or to get from this apartment to your class. And this could be very, it could be very annoying. However, it could help instead of driving on campus or, or, or living in a more expensive apartment. You didn't mention that either, which is not a problem. But, you know, living in a cheaper apartment, you'll be able to save things, buy books, buy materials, as opposed to paying more and not having that type of luxury. Number two, living far would be very beneficial for my own health because I'll be able to take a bike to the class and take a bike back home as opposed to or compared to living on campus or near the campus where I won't get as much exercise and be able to move as my body as much. Sitting in the class, oh. that wasn't necessarily. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I. That's okay. That's okay. It's just the idea has to come. The idea yeah. has to come. That's all there is to it. Violins <laughs> and TV programs. Okay. All right. All right. I disagree that our government should forbid violence and bad language in TV programs because. It is not our government's responsibility to control us in watching TV programs. And because first, for example, for ex can I do it again? I was gonna do uh, another. Because example. for example, for example, okay, 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 <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Wait, wait, You're like, again, because, again, again. because. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay. I disagree with the statement that the government should prohibit violence or bad language in TV programs because it is not our government's responsibility to control that. It is, it is actually the community, especially the parents. They, for example, if a parent is not monitoring what their child is watching, then most likely that child will imitate what they watch. If they monitor their children of what they watch in the TV programs, then that is a good example of good parenting. So it is not the government's responsibility to choose what we watch. 
Oh, so it is not the government's responsibility to choose what it is. Oh, I love that. That was a really good, because you had 41 seconds and then you put that in there. And I was like, hey, that wasn't bad. That wasn't bad, Ms. Jack. <laughs> hey, that was not bad. So wait, you said, okay, the community, the parents. So you said the community, but you didn't go back to that. So it's okay. Uh, parents monitoring. If they don't monitor, basically, the, uh, you know, the, the children are going to end up imitating what they watch if, use the if conditional, which is good, if they end up monitoring, that is a good example of parenting, you know what I mean? Or, you know, what you could have put in is understanding what's right between right and wrong, parenting in that sense, like, it's up to the parents and up to good parenting to know and teach the children what's right from wrong. Just oh, yeah. Good. What up for you? Okay. Put that timer on, too. Timer is on. Let's go. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Now listen to the conversation notes? between two people. Did you see what they are planning for the meal plan? Yeah, and it's a simple money grab by the university. You think so? Absolutely. They are also using the cover of helping us save money. It is shameless. I saw the prices connected with the choices they are talking about. By choosing to eat all three meals in the main cafeteria, you will have to pay more than the all-access plan from last year. Wow, I never used the meal plans, so I wouldn't know. I used it last year, and it was pretty good. You could go to all of those restaurants and the cafeteria. You didn't have to worry if you got the all-access. But now with the choices, you will have to either pay a lot of money to get it all, or you will have to limit yourself. Nobody I know is happy with this. Why do you think the university is doing this? It is simple. They are trying to get more money. They saw how much students like the food on campus, and they are now trying to increase their profit from it. It seems in bad taste that they are using the story of saving students money as the reason of this change. It is. Okay. Mm-hmm. What does the student think about the change to the meal plan? He thinks it's Prepare fun. your response after the beep. All right, this is like a legitimate test right here. I love it. Okay. Ready when you are. The announcement is about the university's plan to change the meal plan next semester by giving flexibility to students to choose when and where to get their food. The male student in the conversation doesn't think that this is a good idea. First, she, he mentions that this is just an easy way to, for the university to make profit because with choosing to eat three meals, students will have to pay more for all access with the food compared to last year. But now he also notes that now they have to pay more money to get all meals. Second reason is that they try to get more money from students because they saw the students, students like to eat in the cafeteria. So this is why the university City. Oh, this is why the. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna end it strong. <laughs> what happened? What happened at the end? Can I try again? Okay, you want to try again, babe? Yeah, because remember, 
you have to pay more than the all access pass from last year. They're not paying the all access right now. That all access was last year. Oh, wait, huh? Wait, I get it. Wait, choosing to, they choosing to eat three meals, they have to pay more. Then all access, then the all access plan from last year. Oh, then an all access. Okay. Okay. Does that mean, okay. Okay. All okay. right. Hey, you can do it again. No problema. Okay, again, again, again. Okay. The announcement is about the university's plan to change the meal plan next semester by giving flexibility to students to choose um, where and when to get their food. The male student in the conversation thinks that this is not a good idea. First, he thinks that this is just an easy way for the university to make profit from students because in choosing to eat three meals, they have to pay more now compared to the all access meals last year. Secondly, another way to make profit is because they think they saw that students like to eat in the cafeteria. So they will increase or jack up the price and then students will end up paying more. And these are the reasons why the students think that it is really not a good idea. <laughs> uh, I love how you said jack up the price. That was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> that was some good old slang. I know you went from increased <laughs> academic bird to jack up slang. <laughs> Throw in some ghetto words there. <laughs> yeah. You got jack up the price. I said, Dad, it sounds like we're on the streets of LA. No, I'm <laughs> Jack up. That's a that's a, a very good slang phrasal verb. That's okay. That's okay. That's funny though. Okay. All right. So how do you think you did? The second one was better when I when I talked slower. <laughs> you see what I mean? When you spoke and when you speak a little bit quicker, it's kind of like there are more pauses. But when you took your time with that one, especially when you talked about the main meals the all access from last year, it was very well spoken and very easy to understand. That was really, really good. All right, the first one though, the first answer I did, I kind of messed up the, the um, detail. Yes. I didn't understand that pretty good firsthand until you mentioned it. Right, <laughs> right, right. And so, yeah, yeah, you not, obviously not, um, what is it, not, uh, you know, messing up that detail just a little bit, it ended up, you know, that that could have been a difference maker. Now, if you were to give that one, along with your speaking question one from the beginning and execute on three and four, we're at over 28, if you could do that. I need that score. I need it. I've seen uh... you again. <laughs> <laughs> you make sure you get some really good writing, too. Okay, here we go. Now listen to the lecture. Our heart is a really important organ. You could say it is the crucial organ for sustaining our life. The function of the heart is to maintain a constant flow of blood throughout the body. We need this constant flow in order for the body to receive oxygen. The heart pumps the oxygenated blood from the lungs into parts of the body that need oxygen. At the same time, it receives deoxygenated blood and metabolic waste products from the body and pumps it further into the lungs to get oxygenated. Another important thing that gets transported by the heart are the hormones. They are basically the information system of the body. So with their movement within our bodies, our organs can function properly. For example, if we feel that we are in danger, the heart will pump adrenaline that is being secreted by our adrenal glands into our system, which will make the body ready for any challenge. Since our cardiovascular system is still a mechanism, it needs to be in balance to avoid any damage. Blood pressure is a measure of that balance. 
We all require a blood pressure high enough to give our organs the blood and nutrients they need, but not so high our blood vessels get damaged. Just like with other functions mentioned, the heart is important for this. The pace at which the heart works decides the resulting blood pressure. Ooh, what are the main yeah. functions of the heart that the professor talks about? How In was that? Oh my God, too much info. Yes. But I think. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. The lecture is about the human heart. The professor discusses the importance of this organ that sustains our body. She mentions three functions of it. First is to maintain flow of blood, flow of blood to receive oxygen and receive deoxygenated blood and to get, to get it oxygenated to pump in our lungs for us to, in order for us to breathe better. Second reason is that the transportation of hormones. This is important because our body needs the hormones to regulate our organs to function properly. An example of this is when we feel in danger, we produce adrenaline. With this hormone, we it uses we uses it uses our uh, this what <laughs> I was lost. I was lost because I, I, I need more time for the third one. Again, 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 again. Oh. Ooh, okay. Let me know when you're ready to get. Let me know when you are ready. Okay. In the lecture, the professor discusses the importance of a human heart. She mentions that. There is functions, sorry. Again, please, no, uh -oh. no, it's going it down. The pressure's getting to you. Uh oh, yeah. okay. Okay. okay, 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 okay. In the lecture, the professor discusses the importance of human heart. It is, it is an organ that sustain our body. She mentions three functions. First is to maintain the flow of blood, blood in our body in order to receive oxygen. And another thing is to receive deoxygenated, deoxygenated blood to get oxygenated that will help us breathe better. Second reason is the transportation of hormones for our organs to function properly. For example, when we feel like we're in danger, our body produces adrenaline. This hormone helps us to get ready for any challenge. And lastly, she mentions that the human heart gives us balance in our blood pressure. This blood pressure measures our, oh, no! <laughs> what happened? Cardio still needs to be a balance. Blood pressure is a measure of that balance. Blood vessels make it down. I, I don't know what I wrote down. <clears throat> I really don't know what I wrote down. Heart important, whatever. It's just a bunch of blah, blah, blah. You could sum that up in like four seconds. But anyways, Yeah, I could have, but I was lost in my thought, and I don't know. Balance. Balance. Blood pressure. What did I write here? What me is too. going on Look with what I wrote. Huh? Cardio me still too. needs in balance. Heart, heart knee, uh, blood pressure is a measure of that balance. Why was she talking about balance? <laughs> I don't even know. Exactly. Blood vessels, maybe. You know what that was? That was a bunch of bullshit we didn't have to put in. That's what it was. That was put there for us to just mention this just randomly. I so what yeah, I could have put, I could have said that our human heart is important in order for us to have a balance in our blood pressure. Right. There you go, in our blood pressure. But I, I don't know if that's true, but fuck it. Put it there. You know what I mean? And I'm sure it is. I'm sure that's true. In a certain way. Yeah. 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 I could I could explain that blood vessel, but I didn't write it down because that's too much of an explanation. 
Exactly. That's number one. Number two, the audio started messing up. So I got lost because there was a census before blood vessels that I wanted to write, but then I got lost because the audio went to shit. And I'm like, oh, oh no. And yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. I could have just said that. Okay. Ah, ah. Almost. I almost finished it strong. <laughs> Right, right, right. And it was, listen, that was a, that was an excellent, that was a really, really good one. I think we just got to do some more of the speaking question three, get back into four. I absolutely believe that you are ready for the speaking question one and the number two.